Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our lesson on accounting books. And then we are going to look at books of original entry, or what you may call the day books. Remember that we have already spoken a lot about accounting books. I'm going to take a quick recap of what we've done so far on accounting books. And I'm going to concentrate on the books of original entry. So what we are going to do today, books of original entry. Okay, now we have learned that accounting books, books that we use in accounting could be split into two main categories, which are the principal books and then the books of original entry or subsidiary books. Now, the subsidiary books is what we also call the books of original entry. The principal books are usually called the ledger, okay? So, under the principal books, we have the ledger, which is the main principal book, as well as the cash book, which is also seen as a ledger, actually. But under the principal books, we have the ledger and the cash book. These two are principal books. The reason why they are principal books is because they follow the double entry system. Now, the subsidiary books do not follow the double entry system. The subsidiary books are books that transactions are first recorded into them before they are posted into the principal books. So what we are going to do is that we are first going to learn how to record transactions into the subsidiary books, which is also called the books of original entry. And then afterwards, we will learn in our next video how to post transactions from the subsidiary books into the ledger. So that is what we are going to do. So we are going to focus on that. As for the ledger and the cash book, I've already done that. We've already done the double entry and we've already treated the two column and then the three column cash book. What is left for us to treat is a petty cash book, which I'm going to also talk about in a different video. But for now, our focus is on the subsidiary books or what we may call the books of original entry. Now, the subsidiary books I told you do not follow the double entry. And so we are going to focus on that now and learn how to prepare the subsidiary books. Okay, before I list the various books of original entry, let us look at the names that we give to these books. Now, you can call it, I told you that there are so many names that you can give. The first one is what I've written, books of original entry. Or... You can call it subsidiary books. Or you can call it them, um, you can call them books of prime entry. Sometimes they are generally called journals. So you can call them journals. Or better still, you can call them books of first entry. Now these are all names that is given to the books of original entry. So when you see books of original entry, subsidiary books, prime books, journals, or books of first entry, they are referring to the same category of books. These are books into which transactions are first recorded. So once there is a transaction, if you pick an invoice or whatever, you first record it in a particular book of original entry before you post them into the ledgers or the, the principal books. Now, that is why we call it original entry. That is the origin of the double entry. We record transactions in there and then we, 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 try, we try to post them later into the ledgers. Now look at the name, subsidiary books. When we say subsidiary, there is a diary somewhere in there, okay, with the idea of a diary. And we know how we record life events in a diary. It is written in the order of occurrence, which we can call chronological. So the reason why we are calling these books subsidiary book is because transactions are recorded in them in their order of occurrence. You cannot record transactions that happen on the feet first before you record transactions that happen on the second of the same month. No, 
the second must come first before the feet. So that is what we call a chronological order or in the order of occurrence. And that is the reason for the name subsidiary books. When we say prime or first, whatever, it means that transactions are recorded in them first, like I have said, and then the general. Okay, so with these are names that are given to the same category books, category of books that we are going to talk about. And then I'm going to now list the books that fall into this category. Books that we can call books of original entry. I've already told you that the principal books are the ledger and the cash book. These two are the principal books. In which case, because the cash book is also called the ledger, we can just say the principal books are the ledgers. Okay, but if you want to, some school of thought would want to separate the cash book as different from the ledgers. In which case, we will say that the cash book and the ledger makes up the principal books. But when we are also agreeing with the school of thought, that is saying that the ledger is a, the cash book is a ledger. Then, if the cash book is a ledger as well, then the principal books can also be called ledgers. Okay, but when we are trying to separate, of which I do most of the time, trying to see the ledgers as different from the cash book, then I will say that the principal books comprises the cash book and the ledgers. When we come to the ledgers, I've already spoken about them. We have four different categories of ledgers. We have the sales ledger, the purchases ledger, we have the private ledger, and the general ledger, or what we call the nominal ledger. These are the four categories of the ledger that we know. But when we come to the books of original entry, we are going to list the various books of original entry. So the prime books that we know, or the subsidiary books that we know, is what we are going to list. And we have already done the theory already in one of my videos. What I'm doing now is just a recap of what we have done so far. And then I'm going to give you the format. We'll pick a question and solve as to how to make entries in these books. And so the first one I'm going to do is a sales journal. And then also I'm going to also mention the purchases journal. These are books that are called books of original entry. Now, it could also be called day books. I forgot that one. Day books. Because transactions are recorded in them daily. So instead of saying sales journal, you can call it a sales day book. Okay. So that is another name for the books of original entry, the day books. So we have the sales journal, the purchases journal. Then also we have sales returns journal. And then we have purchases, returns, journal. So just as we have sales, we have purchases. And then we have sales, returns, and purchase returns. We know that sales returns could also be called returns inwards, journal. And then the purchase returns, journal could also be called returns outwards, journal. All right. And then we also have the general journal. And then we have the cash book. Someone is asking, why is the cash book here? Yes, in accounting, we say that the cash book is the only book that belongs to the subsidiary books at the same time belonging to the ledger. It is belonging to the subsidiary book because transactions are first recorded in them. That is the book of original entry for cash. But when it comes to the principal books, it belongs there because the cash book, even though it's part of the books of original entry, also follows the double entry system. And we know that the principal books are there to execute the double entry system. And because the cash book is also permitting itself to be used, then it can be part of the principal books. What it means is that these first five books do not follow the double entry. That is the meaning. That the cash book is the only prime book that also follows the double entry. It has a debit and a credit side for that. And that is what we mean by the cash book being part of the books of original entry and also being part of the principal books of the ledger. Now, before we move on to the practical aspect, which is my main objective for today, I would want to emphasize on some important aspects of what we are going to do. And this is it. Now, 
We are going to look at the purpose of these books once again. The sales journal, we say that the purpose of the sales journal is for recording credit sales and credit sales alone. I repeat, only. Any other transaction will not come into the sales day book or the sales journal apart from credit sales. So when you are going through the transactions and you see cash sales, don't be tempted. If you see credit sales, it's coming into the sales journal. Cash sales is not coming. Any other transaction is not coming. Sale of a non-current asset is not sales. We know that. When we say sales in accounting, we are referring to the disposal of stock. It means that if there is any transaction that is not a disposal of stock, and you are disposing your non-current asset, it is asset disposal, it will not appear in the sales journal. So what we say is that the sales journal is there to cater for only credit sales. Then look at the purchases journal. It is also there to cater for only credit purchases. That means that apart from the credit purchases, we don't bring in any transaction into the purchases journal. And what I mean is that, now listen, when we say purchases in accounting, we are referring to the goods or the stock that has been bought with the intention of reselling, okay, the, our normal trading goods. When we buy them, that is purchases. When we buy or purchase a non-current asset, it is not purchases. And I have said it and I will say it again, that there is a difference between purchases and purchase. Purchase is a noun, uh, sorry, purchase is a verb, purchases is a noun. And you should be careful. When we say purchases, we are referring to the goods that have been bought for resale. And that is the credit aspect. So cash purchases will not be in the purchases journal. And then let us look at the sales returns. The sales returns is simple. Returns of sales. Returns of credit sales. Okay. So when there is a return of credit sales, we record in the purchases return uh, sales returns general. so when we sell to our customers and they return returns of sales that will come into the returns general for sales or the returns of credit sales if you want me to be specific i'll say credit sales and this will be for returns of credit purchases okay returns of credit purchases will also be in the purchases return. So you can see that for the first four, everything is on credit. Credit, 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 transactions alone are what will appear in the day books. But when we come to the cash book, the cash book is there for all cash transactions, all cash transactions. And in that case, I didn't specify that it is for cash sales, cash, pay. I said transactions. So whether it is sales, purchases, buying a non-current asset by cash selling a non-current asset for cash once there is cash involved paying rent paying every expense by cash or check once there is a cash or on the spot payment the cash book is there for all cash transactions that is why the first four is there for the credits of sales and purchases then this is for the credit of all cash now let us look at something we know that we have cash transaction and a credit transaction and I'm saying that all cash transactions appear in the cash book. All cash transactions appear in the cash book. But, but, it is not all credit transactions that are covered by the first four. Only purchases and sales. So what happens to other credit transactions that are not purchases and sales? They will find their way into the general journal. So look at the name general. So once these ones have gotten what they are specifically made for the general general says that any other transaction is for me so the general general records any other transaction that do not find its way into these other journals now let me also tell you something that i have mentioned before in my previous video on accounting books that you will see that these ones one two three four are specially made for special transactions then the cash book is specially made for cash transactions. But for the general journal, there could be so many different other transactions that could come here. And so we call these ones special journals. So if you see, if you want to talk about special journals, we have six of them which we call the journals. Six journals are here, but only five of them are special. And the five of them are the sales journal, 
purchase journal, sales returns, purchases returns, and the cash book. The general journal is not a special journal because it is not specifically made for a special transaction. All these are tailor-made for some special transactions, but the general journal is there to cater for any other transaction. If you are not careful, you may think that because all these ones end with the name general, 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 and the cash book doesn't end with the name general, then that one is not a special. But no, the cash book rather is a special journal, and then the general journal is not special because it is there to cater for any other transaction and so what we are going to do now i have already treated the cash book you can refer to those videos on that later i will talk about the general journal also in a different video right now what i want to focus on is on the first four i want us to learn how to make entries in the sales journal purchases journal sales returns journal and the purchases returns journal and remember that i have told you that these are for credit sales and credit purchases and the returns of them so that is how we are going to look at the journals especially the first four in this very video okay so what i'm going to do now is that what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give you a format for the first four which is the sales journal the purchase journal the sales returns journal or day book and the purchase returns journal or day book whichever way now the good news is that all four has the same format the four of them the sales journal, the purchases journal, the returns for sales journal, the returns for purchase journal. All four has the same format. So when I give you one format, you can use it for all the four and it works. That is the good news. And this is the format for the journals. So So this is the journal. So, it depends on the heading that you want to give it. If it is sales journal, you call it sales journal on top. But the same format will work for purchases journal. The same format will work for the returns of both. Now, there is a date column here. There is a column for particulars. There is a column for your ledger folio. There is a column for details. And then there is a column for amounts. Even the details has a currency sign because this is where we are going to work discounts. Now, take note that this format, like I said, works for all. And then what you should also remember is that these books do not follow the double entry. So it's very simple. When you meet a transaction, you're not supposed to do any debit and credit when it comes to the books of original entry. All you do over here is a list. You list them in the order of occurrence. That is in a chronological order. And so the date... Particulars will be the name of the debtor or creditor, and then the ledger folio will be the where you know eventually when we finish with this, we are going to learn how to post from here into the ledgers, and the ledgers will follow the double entry. So the ledger folio will be if the name of the person is let's say Kwame, you are going to look for the ledger number for Kwame and put it here so that when you are posting, it becomes easier for you to post, and then we have the details where we are going to calculate discount and the discount we are going to apply here is not a cash discount it's a trade discount which i will explain again and then we'll put the final amount here and so yes there is discount in this but the discount over here is different from the discount in the three column cash book the discount in the three column cash book as well as the discount in the double entry system is the cash discount that is where we have two types of the cash discount. We have discount allowed and discount received. That is cash discount allowed and cash discount received. But then there are two main types of discounts. We have the trade discount and the cash discount. Then in the cash discount, we have cash discount allowed and cash discount received. But trade discount is different. Okay. When it comes to the day books, it is the trade discount that apply. The cash discount do not apply here. Cash discounts will appear in the ledgers then the trade discount will appear in the books of original entry. That is the difference. So you should take note. One, if you want to know the meaning of cash entry, I have explained that in my previous videos anyway. But what I will say is that for now, we are focusing on the practicability aspect. So when you are solving a question and you see trade discounts, then you can apply it. But if you see cash discounts, ignore it because it's not related here. We are interested in the trade discount. 
not the cash discount. So that is the discount that we are going to work over here. Okay. And so, without wasting my time, what I want to do now is I want us to take a question straight away because some of these topics is better understood by solving a question. So let us look at a question and then solve the question together. Okay. Harriet Adepa, a sole trader, made the following transactions in January 2018. So we have January 2nd. Credit purchases from Frempon, 4,000 Ghana cities. Enima, 3,000 Ghana cities. Honesty, 2,500. In each case, a trade discount of 10% allowed. Okay, so that is it for that. Then we move to January 5th. Credit sales to Bonsu, 5,000. Banfo, 3,000. Opoku, 2,000 Ghana cities. In each case, trade discount of 15% allowed. So we have done a credit purchase and a credit sale to three different people at the same time. Or in each case, we are going to deduct some discounts. So we move. January 10, credit purchase from Agbeve, 4,000. Samata, 2,500. Of Bain, 2,700. Okay, so there is no discount. 15th, credit sales to Kobla, 6,000. Ampofo, 3,500. Mensa, 4,500. So that one too, there is no discount. 20th, Harriet returns goods to Enima, 200 Ghana cities. Anesti, 300 Ghana cities. Agbeve, 500 Ghana cities. Then, 20 feet. Goods returned to Harriet from Bonsu, 1,000 Ghana cities. Mensa, 400 Ghana cities. Kobla, 800 Ghana cities. Then, January 28. Credit sales to Banfo 6,600, subject to 15% trade discount. Ampofo 1,800 Ghana cities. 30th, which is the last one. Credit purchase from Frempong, 3,000 Ghana cities. Agbeve, 2,200. You are required to A, open a relevant subsidiary books and B, post the items to their relevant ledgers. All right, so what we have done is that, what we are going to do is that we are ju we just read the question, we are required to do two things. To open the relevant subsidiary books, which is this format I just gave you, and then we are also going to post to the ledgers, which I have not taught. So I'm going to concentrate on solving the A part with you in this video. Then in our next video, we are going to look at how to post them into the relevant ledgers. So that is what we are going to do now. Okay. So we are going to solve this question together. I have a very small board. So I'm trying to adjust. So that's what I was doing, trying to create the format for each of them. So what I'm going to do is that let me call this sales day book or sales journal. And then I will have my dates, particulars, ledger folio, which is LF details and then the amount column so we just have to observe what i'm doing i put my currency sign up there the same for this one dates particulars ledger folio details and amount your currency sign beneath the details and amount columns so this will be for purchases so purchases day book or purchases journal and then let me also call this the sales returns or returns in was journal i have my dates i have my particulars i have my folio i have details and then amounts with my currency signs up there and finally i call this purchases returns journal with my 
narrations, amount, details, ledger folio, particulars, and dates. I put my currency sign. So this is the outlay of the four formats. It's the same format. Headings are different. And the reason why I've made these two smaller is that I think we have one or two transactions only for them. And I think this space will be enough to contain them. So pardon me with the way I have made them very small because I don't have enough space on my board. Okay. All right. So this is what we are going to do. Let us go back to the question and try solving that together. So, Harriet at the Harriet at the part a sole trader made the following transactions in January 2018. So, January 2nd, there was credit purchases from three people, Frempong, Enima, and then Honesty. And in each case, we are deducted a 10% trade discount. Okay, so credit purchases goes into the purchases, and I told you if it was cash purchases, it will not come would have gone into the cash book. So the year must come first, 2018, then you say January 2nd. It's under credit, it's under purchases, so it comes into the purchases journal. And the names there are Frimpong, 4,000. And each case is a 10% discount. So write Frimpong as a particulars. And then, because there is a discount, if there was no discount, we would have left this place blank. But because there is a discount, you have to first write it under the details column. Please take note. If there was no discount, the amount would have come straight under amount. The money would have come straight. But because there is discount, put it under details. And then you say, you slant it and say, less 10% trade discount. And the 10%, you calculate 10% of 4,000, that would be 400. So when you take out 400 from 4,000, you have 3,600. So you put the final answer on the right side and under the amount column. So this is how to go by the first transaction. Then the second one also on the second, it was Frimpong and Enima. So Enima will be 3,000. And so we write Enima the same date and then 3000 comes under the details we'll say less 10 percent trade discounts and then 10 percent of 3000 will be 300 so we put the balance of 2700 under the amount column so this is how to go by these kind of transactions and then the next name or the last name is honesty 2500 so we write honesty for the same date. 2,500 comes under details because of the discount. We less 10% trade discount. So you put the narration there. And 10% of 2,500 will be 250. So when we take that out, we have 2,250. So we are done with the first transaction as easy as it is. We are not going to stress ourselves. This is not double entry. We are just listing. Only that where there is discount, we apply the rate and then take that out under details before we take to the amount column. So this is how to go by these kind of transactions. Okay. And then we look at the next one on the feet. Credit sales to Bonsu, 5,005. Bam for 3,000. Opoku, 2,000. In each case, a trade discount of 15% is allowed. So this is credit sales. So it goes under the sales day book. And then the names are Bonsu, which is 5,000. So on the 5th, 2018, January 5th, Bonsu, the amount is 5,000. Because there is a discount, we write it under details. And then we'll say less 15% trade discount. 15% of 5,000 is going to be 750. So we take that out and we have 4,250 for Bonsu. Then we move to the next name. The next name is Bamfo, which is 3,000, also 15%. And so Bamfo 
Bam four, three thousand. Put it under details. Then you less ten percent trade discount. And the uh, hey, sorry, it's fifteen percent trade discount. And then fifteen percent of three thousand is going to be four hundred and fifty. So you take that out, and then you have two thousand five hundred and fifty. And then finally, the last name is Opoku, which is two thousand. So Opoku. 2000 still under the same date we less 15 percent trade discount and the 15 percent of 2000 is going to be 300 ghana cities so we take that out and then we have 1700 for opoku so this is how to make entry into the sales day book okay and then we move on to the next transaction that is on the 10th. Credit purchase from Agbeve, 4,000. Samata, 2,005. Uh, Obin, 2,700. These ones has no discount. So we are just going to list them straight in the purchase journal because they are purchases, credit purchases. So credit purchase from Agbeve, 4,000. So because there are no discounts, the date is January 10th. You just write Agbeve and straight away you move to the amount column to write your 4,000 because there was no discount. We only bring that into the details column when there is a discount. So because there is no discount, it goes straight. After Agbeve, the next name that we have is Samata, which is also 2005. So the same date, Samata, straight to amount column 2,500 because there is no discount to be deducted. I don't think this is a difficult thing to do, is it? Okay, so then we move on to the last name, Obin, under the same day, 2,700. So we also bought on credit from Obin, 2,700. We record it straight under amount because there are no details for discount. On the 15th, credit sales to Kobla, 6,000. Ampofo, 3,5. Mensa, 4,5. There are no discounts to this as well. So credit sales, Kobla, 6,000. So on the 15th, January 15th, Kobla, the amount is 6,000. It's coming straight to amount because there are no discounts involved. Then Ampofo, 3,500. So Ampofo, 3,500. And then finally, the name is Mensa, 4,500. It also comes straight under the amount column because there are no discounts. I'm sure this is very simple and understanding for you, right? Okay. Then we move on to the next transaction. Harriet returns goods to Enima, 200. Anesti, 300. Agbeve. 500 Ghana cities. Now, this is returns, and this is returns outwards. Harriet is the sole proprietor. Harriet is returning goods to these people. So it's, it is purchases returns. Now, if you even want to be sure, look at the names. We have Enima and Co. Enima and Co are in the purchases journal. Okay. Enima and um, Honesty. Where is Anesti? Yeah, they are all in here. And then Agbeve. Agbeve is also in the purchase. So Harriet is now returning goods to them. Now, listen very carefully over here. When it comes to returns, this is where the headache is. When you are returning goods to a, a supplier or the suppliers or a customer is returning goods to you, what you have to consider is the discount at the time of purchase or sale. So when we are returning goods to Enima, we have to be sure that at the time that we were buying from Enima, well, did we enjoy some trade discount? If yes, then when we are returning, we have to still subtract the discount, even though the question will not mention the discount for you in here. I repeat, the returns that you are doing, the value of the goods is what they have given you. You are returning goods to the value of 200 to Enima, not necessarily the money, the goods to the value of 200. And you bought from Enima 3,000 goods to the value of 3,000. 
but you were given a three, the ten percent discount. Okay, so indirectly you owe Enima two seven. So if you are returning goods to the value of two hundred, you have to apply the same ten percent discount in the purchases return journal. That is the meaning. So even though they did not mention discount here, when you are recording, you have to show the discount. But take uh, Agbeve. We are also returning to Agbeve in the same transaction, 500. Take Agbeve's case, for example. When we were buying from Agbeve, we didn't enjoy any trade discount. So when we are returning, there will also not be any discount. That is the meaning. So it is when there was a discount at the time of purchase or sale that we are going to also calculate discount at the time of returns. But if there were no discounts, you don't calculate discounts. So let us go back to the transaction. 20 feet, uh, sorry, 20th. Harriet returns goods to Enima 200, um, Anesty 300, Agbeve 500. So Enima 200. So the date is 2018. It should be recorded in the purchases returns journal because we are returning out. Okay, January 20th. We are returning to um, Enima. And the amount is 200, goes to the value of 200. We don't just come and write the 200 under the amounts column. That is what I'm saying. When you come under the amounts column and you write 200, you have made a mistake. You have to put it under the detail, 200. And then you say less 10% trade discount. Even though they didn't mention it in the returns information. 10% of 200 is 20. That means that the value that is reduced from what you are supposed to pay is actually 180. So even though when they were mentioning the returns, they did not mention any percentage as a trade discount. Yet, you, the student, have to look at when you were making the purchase at the time. Did you enjoy any discount? If you did, your returns also discount must, have, must affect it. That is the meaning. I'm sure you are okay. If you are not okay, you can put it on repeat and listen again. Now, the next name that we have is Anesty 300. On the same date, we are returning to Anesty goes to the value of 300 CDs. Now, when we bought from Anesty, still we enjoyed a 10% discount. And so when we are returning, let us put it first under details. Less 10% trade discount. And that is going to be 30. So we return and then the value will eventually be 270 for Anesty. I'm sure your understanding is coming. And the final one is Agbeve, 500. On the same date, we return goods to Agbeve, 500 CDs. Now, we have seen that for Agbeve, we did not enjoy any discount. So, we skip the details and go straight under the amount and then put there our 500 Ghana CDs. That is how to go about this one. Okay. So, let us also look at the next transaction, which is the 25th. Goods returned to Harriet from this time it returns inwards from bones 1000 men's 400 kobla 800. this time customers are rather returning to the proprietor and the first one is from bones 1000. in the same case for each of them you go back to look at the time of sale whether we also allowed or we gave them a discount so for bones he enjoyed a discount of 15 percent okay and because he enjoyed a discount of 15 percent when he's returning we also have to calculate the percentage and then take it out of the value of the goods that he's returning in the returns in was general so bonsu is returning goods to the value of 1000 he enjoyed 15 percent discount so in the year 2018 january 25th bonsu is what you write under particulars and then under the details you are going to put there 1000 because there is a discount that is how much is actually returning the value then less it was 15 percent so 15 percent trade discount even though they didn't mention it here so 15 percent of 1000 will be 150 take it out and you have 850 remaining that you put there now let me also hammer on something i know you may be thinking why i have not said anything about the ledger folio don't worry i'll come back there it's not so important to what we are doing now but i'll come back there because it's more practical in the office than in the examination okay so i'll come back to the ledger folios and then we move 
The next name is Mensa 400. Mensa is also returning goods. Now, when we sold to Mensa, was there any discount? No. Mensa did not enjoy any discount. So, the amount that Mensa is returning will not go under the details. It will go straight into the amount column. And the value is 400 Ghana cities. That is the amount that Mensa is returning. And then finally, it is Kobla. Kobla is also returning goods. But Kobla also did not enjoy discount. And so, we are also not going to calculate any discount for the returns from Kobla, which is at a value of 800, going straight under the amount. This is very simple. You should understand this. I'm sure by now you have understood this. Let us not stress ourselves too much. Okay. Now let us look at the last but one transaction. Credit sales to Banfo, 28. Credit sales to Banfo, 6,600. Subject to 15% trade discount. Amp of 1,800. So look at this very carefully. Credit sales to Banfo, subject to 15% trade discount. Amp of is 1008. The meaning is that the discount affects only Bamfo, it doesn't affect Ampof. Take note, don't calculate for both. There are circumstances where they will give you both, like we had in the earlier stages, and they will say all subject to the discount. In this case, the discount affects only Bamfo, it doesn't affect Ampof. So we are going to do two, and each of them is separate. So credit sales to Bamfo 6006. Subject to 15% discount. So the date is January 28th. Bamfo. The amount is 6,006. I'm writing it under details because there is a discount component. And the discount is 15%. Less 15% trade discount. And 15% of 6,600 will be 990. Okay. So we take 990 out of 6,600. And then we are going to have 5,610. And then we'll be done. And then the next name is Ampofo. Ampofo didn't enjoy any discount. And so straight away, we take the 1,008. But it is still at the same date. And so let us be careful of the way they construct the English. There could be times where the discount could affect all of them or some of them, and it will not affect some, depending on the number of names they have listed. Okay. Then the final one, the final one, 30th, on the 30th of January, credit purchases from Frempon, credit purchase from Frempon, 3,000, Agbeve, 2,200. So this is credit purchases. So Frempon, the date is on the 30th, January 30th. And there are no discounts in here. So Frempon, the value of Frempon's purchases is, purchase from Frempon is 3,000. Going straight under the amount. And then the last name is Agbeve, 2,200. 2,200. And so we are done with the transactions. What is left for us to do is to close these journals off. Okay. Okay, so... In closing of these journals, this is what we do. We just add up. Ignore the details column, just add up the amounts. That is all. You just find total for the amounts, and then you are good to go. For each of them, just find total for the amounts. The total for the sales journal is 29,000. 910 and then the total for the purchases journal is 22,950 and the total for the sales returns journal is 2,050 Ghana cities and the total for purchases returns is 950 Ghana cities so this is how to go about this now let me come back to the ledger folio and then okay let me still teach you how to narrate the total so once you get the total you can simply call it total credit sales. Simple. But if you want to explain it extensively, you can say total credit sales transferred to sales account in the general ledger. 
because we are going to transfer this total will be posted into the sales account this total will be posted into the purchases account this total will be posted into the sales returns account and this total will be posted into the purchase returns account so you can just say total credit sales then you can add transfer to maybe sales account now this is where the issue is when it comes to the ledger folios sometimes in the examinations i don't really think they are too important but what we do normally is that all these people here are debtors and the people listed in the purchase journal are creditors so accounts of the debtors will be found in the sales ledger so bonus account will be found in sales ledger so you write here sl Banfo's account in the sales ledger so sl but when you say sl sl you know that account is a page of a ledger so if you go to the sales ledger page one could be for bonsu page two could be for Banfo. so sometimes you can just make this place sl1 then Banfo will be sl2 to show that bonsu's account will be found in sales ledger page one then Banfo will be found on sales ledger page two if you come to poku you can make it sl3 sales ledger page three Kobla will be sl4 Ampofo, SL5, Mensa, SL6. Then Banfo, don't keep on numbering. Banfo is already here as SL2, so please, this is the same as the SL2. It will not go to SL7. Ampofo is also here as SL5, so SL5. So, what we normally do with the ledger folio is that we show which page of the ledger to find account of the particular data. And the same for purchases. Which account in the purchase ledger are we going to find account of the creditor? That is the meaning. So, practically, they are very relevant. But for examination purposes, what we actually need is how to calculate the discount and then show the amount. So, these ones. And we know credit sales will be posted to sales account. And sales account will be found in the general ledger. So, under the ledger folio total, you can put JL1 general ledger page one that is where you find the sales account so the same way you can come to frame point and say pl1 purchase ledger one enema purchases ledger two honesty purchase ledger three pl3 agbeve pl4 samata pl5 frame obey pl6 frame point is pl1 it's already up there don't continue number agbeve is pl4 so that is how to go about it then you say total credit purchases this one will be posted to the purchases account and that is in the general ledger so general ledger will be jl under the folio column you can make it jl2 because we call the sales jl1 so they will be on different pages then we come to the returns now if you still want to do the folio the returns be very careful about the returns because if you pick bonsu bonsu's account is in sales ledger one so even though he's returning it should be the same sales ledger one don't <laughs> make any mistake mensa mensa's account is in sales ledger six so you put sl6 in front of mensa under the folio then cobla cobla is sales ledger four so you put sl4 that is how to go by so even though i am saying that it's not very important for the exam it is also important that you show the right ledger folios then you will say total credit hey this one will be total sales returns and that will be general ledger three because we have one two and then finally total purchases returns will be general ledger four and then we'll look at anima anima we called we called we gave anima purchase ledger two so PL2. Honesty was given three. So PL3. And then Agbeve was given four. PL4. So you pick them from the purchases and the sales journals respectively. So in early, what we are saying practically is that in the sales ledger, you are going to see an MS uh, bonus account on the first page. That is the meaning of the ledger folio. You are showing where the ledger account will be found in the ledger. Okay, so this brings us to the part one of our video on books of original entry. In the part two of this video, 
we are going to look at the general journal and then we we'll also look at how to make the postings into the ledger that is also very very necessary something that we must do also we are also going to look at the petty cash book in this same series we are going to look at the petty cash book as well so remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new please subscribe ring the notification bell so that any new video that we upload you are going to get the notifications on your devices and then you will join us to learn together and be successful together until we meet again another time it is bye for now